In this session, we are going to introduce another interesting algorithm, SCAN, which is density-based clustering of networks. For social network analysis, people are often interested in finding clicks, hops, and outliers. Okay. Clicks, you can think is people know each other, people tightly connected with each other. Hops could be the people who, be, who are connected to many different groups, but they may not belong to a single group. The outliers, maybe they do not belong to any other clique, but they may have some few connections with some clusters or some groups. It would be nice to find cliques, hubs, and outliers. Okay. If we identify this, we will be able to find some special groups, for example, families, uh, some kind of social communities, or terrorist cells, or many other things. Then we introduce an interesting algorithm called SCAN, which is density-based clustering of networks. So we first see how SCAN defines the neighborhood of a vertex. Okay. The neighborhood of vertex V essentially defined as V itself, its neighbor of itself, then directly connected using social links is its direct neighbor. So gamma of V essentially V and its neighbor connected those red, those yellow points are the direct neighborhood. Then if we want to compute the similarity or connectivity between the two vertices uh, V and W, suppose we have two vertices V and W, we want to see how tightly they are connected or how similar they are. So essentially, is if they have many common neighbors, okay, and their own size, you know, as a, as a normalized factor. So you probably can see the more common neighbors they share, and also the less other neighbors. Essentially, if these are all their neighbors, so they are very tightly connected or they are very similar. Okay, so. If you find a one big star, they, uh, they have many, many neighbors. Uh, of course, they may have some neighbor with W, but they may not be as similar as the other nodes. Okay. So based on this, we can work out a structure similarity based on this similar, the notion of similarity. The structure similarity usually is large for members of a clique but it's a small for hubs and outliers. So we, based on this, we can work out a density-based clustering. Okay. So the structure connectivity, we can think about it based on the density connection. Uh, we can work out uh, as, uh, an, um, a definition similar to DB scan in the sense we still have its epsilon neighborhood. Simply says, if uh, these two, their similarity is greater than the epsilon threshold, then we will say they are connected, then W is uh, uh, V's neighborhood, and then this V's neighborhood, uh, actually the number of such neighbors is V's uh, neighborhood, epsilon neighborhood. Then for core, essentially is if this epsilon neighborhood, the number of such epsilon neighborhood is greater or equal to a minimum support threshold, uh, you can think of mu is a minimum, is a threshold. Okay. Simply says, if this V's neighbor okay, is no less than a threshold, then V is the core. Okay. Based on this, we will be able to derive Directly structure reachable. Directly structure reachable means uh, V is a core and uh, W is its direct neighbor, then V will be uh, directly reachable to W. Okay. So you probably can see that's a very similar thing in, uh, in DB scan if uh, you also have directly reachable, directly density reachable, this one called directly structure reachable. Then a structure reachable essentially we write on like a reach of U and V is a transitive closure of directly structure reachable. Simply says if uh, Q 
can reach P2, P2 can reach P, and Q will also be able to reach P. That means uh, you use a, a sequence of directly reachable, you can use transitive closure, that's also reachable. Okay. Then what is a structure connected? Structure connected simply says, if this node P reachable by O, and a Q is also reachable by O, then P and Q are connected. The same thing is if we look at V and W, if U can reach V and U can reach W, and V and W are connected. So that's a very similar notion, but the previous notion uh, drawing this graph is a spatial uh, reachability based on the density. Okay. Here, the new definition in scan is a structure reachable based on the graph, based on the topological structures. Okay. Then we'll see how to get a structurally connected clusters. Essentially, a, a cluster can be considered as they are structurally reachable, it's connected, and they are maximum, that means all the connected ones form one cluster. Okay. Based on this, you can get a cluster, you also can get a hub, which is linking, it does not belong to any cluster, but linking to multiple clusters. You also can get an outlier, which uh, does not belong to any cluster, but only connected to very few clusters. So then we look at how this scan algorithm is executed. Okay. Suppose we want to find, suppose we said mu is 2, uh, epsilon is 0 0.7. Then we'll see uh, how we compute their similarity. That simply says uh, how uh, they are connected for node 9 and 13. We just give you a little uh, uh, detail to see how 9 and 13, their, their similarity is 0 0.63. Okay. Then we can see uh, because 13's uh, directly reachable the neighborhood is 9 and 13. Okay, nines directly the neighborhood directly reachable uh, is 8, uh, 12, 10, and 13. That's a neighborhood. Okay, then we know 13's neighbor you have two, and nine has five neighbors, okay, including itself. Their intersection of their neighborhood is 9 and 13 because that's only 9 and 13 is common. Okay, then if you look at their, their size, the 913, the size is 2. Then you base on the formula to compute the sigma. Essentially, is you look at the size is 2, and the other size is five, 2 times 5. Then you compute this, you get 0 0.63. That's what you get it. Okay. In a similar way, you can compute the others. So let's compute, suppose 8, we can compute it's uh, similar to 7, uh, 12, and 9. What you can see is these two is above the threshold. That means 8 and 9, 8 and 12 is above the threshold. They actually form a cluster. Okay. Then you can keep going. If we keep going, we will see we compute 9 and 10, how they are connected. We found that they are below the threshold. Okay. But if you look at 12, uh, how they connect it with the other nodes, you will find this one actually is above the threshold. You grab all these into one cluster. You actually can see this one really form a nice cluster. Then you calculate six, how they connect it with the uh, direct neighbors. So you find actually none of them go over the threshold 0 0.7. Uh, simply said, this one is pretty isolated. And then if you keep going, you will find uh, six actually is a hub, and then one zero one two three four five. This six nodes actually form another cluster. So you find the hubs, uh, outliers, and the two clusters. Okay. This is just the execution of this small graph. Uh, for several real world, pretty big graph, uh, Xiao Wei Xu actually did a very uh, several experiments to show uh, a lot of real-world data sets can generate very interesting clusters. Okay. So the major issue becomes how can we smartly set up mu and epsilon? 
There are some follow-up studies on how to decide mu and y, how to make the algorithm less sensitive to the parameters. This algorithm is pretty efficient because you only look at your very close neighbors instead of trying to, find, to estimate anything from the whole graph. So the running time actually is, uh, is a big O of number of edges. Since for sparse network, each node will not connect to too many edges. So that's the reason for sparse network, the complexity is big O over the size of vertices. If you look at the running time in the real data sets, you find you know, when the number of vertices grows bigger and bigger, uh, actually the fast modularity, it, it will take much longer time to, to finish. But using this uh, scan algorithm, actually it's, it's still very efficient. Now we finish this uh, lecture. In this lecture, we discuss how to do clustering on graphs and network data. Especially we introduce some basic concepts of graph and network clustering. We introduce the representation of graphs and networks, uh, discuss some typical evaluation measures, outline the general approach of graph clustering, especially we focus on spectral clustering and density-based clustering of networks. Then here I will introduce you a few interesting research papers and uh, tutorials and some general chapters of the book. Uh, interested readers, you may like to read those things to have deeper understanding on the material covered in this lecture. Thank you.